In problem 11, we're asked to graph a function on our calculator and restrict the input window to some specific values. Then draw a sketch on our paper and indicate the domain and range using those restricted values. So let's see the steps that we would take to use our calculator to graph our given function y equals x minus 1. So in our calculator, we're going to press the y equals button and then enter x minus 1 then we're asked to change the window. So let's take a look. We can see our window here is negative 10 to 10 and the way you would access that is to press the window button on your calculator. We're asked to enter negative 5 for x min and 5 for x max and then y min negative 10, y max at 10 are fine. So once we enter these new values, we're going to press this graph button and notice it's kind of already showed up in our window down here at the bottom. Here is a graph of our function. So let's take a second and transcribe that to our paper and go ahead and plot and label the endpoints. To plot and label the endpoints of the graph, I need to determine what those endpoints are. I was given specific values for my endpoints of my input. Input max was 5. So if I plug 5 in to my equation, 5 minus 1 is 4. So the corresponding output value is 4. So I can fill in the coordinates for this ordered pair. Same thing for the minimum value. If the minimum value of x is negative 5, negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6 so I can identify the coordinates of the ordered pair here. Now to identify the domain and range what I'm really doing for each one, for domain I'm looking at the set of allowable input values. So if I take a look at my graph here my inputs start here and travel to here. So if I look at just the inputs, I'm going to kind of draw a little kind of shading there on the x-axis. Then my domain travels from negative 5 less than or equal to input which is x less than or equal to my maximum input which is 5. Looking at my range, my range gives me the largest allowable set of outputs so I can focus on just the y-axis from here to here. And if I look at just that part of the graph, the outputs are going to travel from that bottom point that I highlighted all the way up to this one. If I want to write that using correct notation, my outputs travel from their smallest value of negative 6 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 4. So there are my domain and range written using correct function notation. And on your graph, if you would, I neglected to do this at the beginning. It should have been done right away. Always, always, always label your axes. Now, in part B, the question is, if the input and output are not restricted as above, indicate the domain and range. So in the first part, when we limited the values for input here, and output, then we created an artificial boundary on this function. If instead I'm allowed to use any value of x for which the function takes on inputs and outputs, then my domain would be all real numbers and my range would be all real numbers. In other words, for this function if there were no artificial restrictions placed upon the domain and the range, then there would be none.